So my name is Cameron uh, Ishi. I'm the communications lead for UVM Staff United, which is the union of clerical, professional, and technical staff members at the University of Vermont. Yeah. Yeah, so right now, uh, UVM Staff United, which represents about 1,500 staff members. Um, it's the largest union at UVM, and it's the second largest union in the whole state of Vermont. Uh, we have been in contract negotiations since February. Uh, our contract expired at the end of June. Uh, and how you know labor contracts work, it's an agreement between the union and management to, you know, have a certain level of fair pay, have certain things like parental leave, certain like standards of conditions. Uh, so we've been without a contract since July 1st uh, and it is now October 6th. <laughs> so that's it's quite a long time to not have that in place to be protecting our rights, you know. And also, you know, that means that we don't get raises based on anyone's performance and like my manager or my boss, they have no say over my pay. It's determined at the institutional level. And so the fact that we're, uh, we've been bargaining and we don't have a contract means that nobody got their raises on July 1st. Uh, and so a lot of people need that money. Um, yeah, no, it's hard out here and Yeah, so we're the we've resolved dozens of contract articles um, about things like uh, when shifts start and end, um, vacation time. The specific issues that we're still at impasse over. It's wages is the big one. Um, they are offering us below inflation level raises. Uh, it comes out to. Um, that their latest offer was, it's kind of complicated, like different percentage levels for different people, but on average it would come out to, uh, I think, 2.6 percent wage, wage increases uh, across the board, which, you know, inflation has been at 3.6 percent, so it's functionally a pay cut if you're not making enough. And, so you get into this cycle where like older people don't have enough money to retire. You know, we see people who are still working into their old age because they have to be. Uh, and young people who, you know, the state of Vermont's always talking about like we need more young people to stay here, right? We need people to not leave. People can't afford to stay here because we're not being paid enough to stay, to afford housing here, you know? and so. My perspective is that the administration is incentivizing this culture where people are supposed to cycle in and out of low paying jobs like you would at a big box store in like under three years, right? So then they don't have to end up paying out retirement benefits and things like that. Um, which is just not an appropriate model for higher education because we have serious expertise that we bring to the job, right? Like, this is people who work in labs, who work in libraries, who are, like, supporting field science, um, and, like, losing that institutional knowledge over and over again as people leave because they can't stay, it's hugely detrimental to the university. So, yeah, so we're at impasse right now, which uh, I can explain what that means. Uh, essentially, the offers have gone back and forth, uh, and at this point, the, the university is not willing to come up on wages anymore, they've indicated, uh, and we're not willing to go down to where they're at. We've come down and down and down over the course of negotiations, uh, and we need fair pay. Uh, a couple other issues we are still bargaining is career progression. So right now, how people's careers are determined, how your pay is determined, it's the pay band system where they say, oh, your position uh, of town meeting TV like employee will have a maximum pay and a minimum pay. And where you get placed in that band for what you're actually paid, uh, it's completely opaque. Nobody has any idea how it's determined, right? So 
We would love for there to be a step scale system where, you know, the first, your years of experience, like say you spent uh, five years at uh, city meeting TV, it's before town meeting TV, right? So you would come in at a step scale at step five, right, for your years of experience. And then after one year at town meeting TV, you go to step six, step seven, and each step is associated with a pay increase so that you can look at it and you can see 15 years from now, if I stay in this job, uh, what am I gonna be making and am I okay with that, right? And then also clear things like, if, I, if you were to go and get a master's degree in, in town TV, then you become, uh, you go from town meeting TV guy level one to level two. And that's also associated with a pay increase. So that people have like some transparency as to how to build their careers and they can make decisions as opposed to just stagnating in the middle of a, a pay band with no idea how your pay is determined in that band. Um, and so we have not got a lot of traction with that so far. Uh, and then I think the third major issue is parental leave. Uh, so right now we have eight weeks of parental leave. Um, faculty have 15. Uh, we've been asking for parity with faculty. Uh, pretty, one of my favorite bargaining moments is when one of our negotiators asked them to explain what the difference is between a staff baby and a faculty baby, that there would be uh, a difference in the amount of like time off for care for those babies. And of course they were like, that's not a serious question. Well, it is a serious question because like people are having babies that they have to go back to work after what, eight weeks? Which is, you know, obviously not ideal. So there are, there are a lot of things that we have uh, worked with them on and hammered out agreements. Uh, but these are the, so career progression, parental leave, and then wages. Uh, are our main still open on the table issues. But we're gonna have to go to the labor board, unfortunately, because they are not willing to continue negotiating with us, so. And so what did the labor board provide you? Like what, like, regardless of what they were doing, like what do you get? Like, like, yeah, so how it works when you get to impasse is there will be, there's a federal mediator who comes in and examines the situation and tries to propose alternatives. Uh, and if they cannot like help us move along, then they will say, okay, now you've been certified that you're at, really at impasse. Like you really can't figure this out. Um, like the third party involvement isn't gonna help. Uh, and then the stage we're at now is we are recruiting a fact finder, um, which is a third party, uh, a third party person who will, who's agreed to by both sides, and that person's gonna come in, they're going to examine the university's case for, this is why we say like, we don't have any money and we can't pay them anything, right? Versus what we say is like, we went to their board of trustees meeting and we heard them report that they're in great financial health. You know, we think they're making a lot of money and they just don't wanna pay us. So the sides will present their cases and then going to the labor board, the staff union will present our last best and final offer, uh, and then the University of Vermont will present their last best and final offer, and then the fact finder will, will present their case, right? And if the labor board, they're essentially a judicial body, if they look at it and they say, oh, well, UVM Staff United's plan would like bankrupt the university or something, we can't do that, and like UVM, management's plan like that would bankrupt all their staff so we can't do that then they pick the fact finder which is probably going to be essentially a more independent determination um, so but they, they have to pick from one of the plans and then that plan is just imposed which we would prefer a negotiation because the outcome of a negotiation is that all our members get to vote on accepting it right and the member buy-in is really important to us right because like everyone on the bargaining team, like we're all staff, like we're trying to serve our peers and we want them to be on board with what we're doing. But so going to the labor board does mean something, something is gonna be imposed. But we're willing to do that if we think it's gonna be more favorable than 2.6%, right? So, yeah. Other questions? <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, so we would love people to follow us on our Instagram um, because we have various uh, events that we will invite the community to come out to to support us. Um, so you can look up UVM Staff United on Instagram and stay in touch and stay connected with us. Yeah. Thank you.